Hey everyone, welcome to Round Ball Stew. I am Matt Straup, and today on the show, we will be answering fantasy basketball questions submitted by you, our listeners. On Twitter, we're going to be hitting a wide range of topics as we get ready for the fantasy season, including draft strategy, player outlooks, and more. And if you are watching with us on YouTube, this is all counting down to our nine category industry mock draft show. An hour from now, I'm joined by Ryan Knaus and Steve Alexander. And guys, just to just to lay this straight here. Uh, Steve, we've given you one job. You have to preload. You have to load in the <laughs> viewer slash listener questions. Are you prepared for this? I think so, Matt. I think so. Okay. You 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 always say, Steve, give me one job and I'll do it. Give me two, and we're in trouble. So I think we're in good shape as long as we don't load anything else onto your plate. Well, Steve also does have to answer questions, so hopefully he can hold <laughs> these competing true. goals in mind That's for the true. next hour. Dude, I got That's this. I okay. Got okay. This. I, the confidence is is there. I like it. All right. We're going to jump right in because we have a lot to get through. Uh, thanks to everyone who submitted questions. We're going to get to as many as we can here. Uh, this first one is from Mike R9977. He says, I always draft bad Roto teams specifically in the percentage categories. We've all been there. That's my comment, not his. Invariably, he says, I'm near the bottom in both field goal and free throw percentage. Do you have any suggestions for a draft? And Ryan, we're going to throw this one your way first. And I mean, Roto, sure, but I think this also applies to head-to-head. Those categories matter, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a different approach in head-to-head where you can punt percentages frequently. Well, we can get into that. But generally speaking, I would say one thing I try to avoid to, to not tank percentages is to not draft players who will kill your percentages out of position. So by mm -hmm. that, I mean someone like De'Aaron Fox, who will destroy your free throw percentage as a point guard, or mm -hmm. RJ Barrett, who shot 71% from the line on nearly six attempts per game. That is a high volume weighted impact that's going to ruin you from, a, from the guard wing positions. Those are the things I try to avoid. Kevin Porter Jr. might be part of that too. It changes if you're already punting free throw percentage, and then you want to add a bad free throw percentage guard suddenly they're more valuable in the middle of the draft if that's your approach but in roto it's very tough to punt a category so i try to avoid those out of position category killers and another little tip is if you draft someone like james harden in the first round who's a fantastic free throw percentage shooter with high volume it's easy to, t to sell yourself on the idea like well now i can draft yeah. nick claxton and right. mason Plumley and whoever because i've got this buffer all you're doing is a zero-sum game of eroding one of the strengths of your best player so i would avoid that mental trap of thinking i can sustain the hit yeah i haven't played roto probably since shaquille o'neal was playing basketball <laughs> uh roto for me is baseball head to head is is basketball but I know a lot of people play Roto, and I, I think what Ryan said is the, the point you can't draft a guy like Shaquille O'Neal back in the day or a really bad free throw shooter did it today that's just going to totally tank uh, tank that percentage and give you no shot at, at bouncing back from it. So um, when I'm drafting those teams, my goal is to, to try to be good, really good in like four categories and then decent in the rest of them and not have any really bad ones because – if you get a one in a category in Roto, it's really hard to right. win. It's possible to win, yep. but it's really hard. Right. Yeah, you can do a soft punt, I think, in Roto. A full punt where you're last in a category is really hard to come back from. And I'll just accentuate a point Ryan said. My, my only point here, and it's quick, is don't, don't underestimate how much damage one guy can do in either percentage category, head-to-head -head or Roto. Uh, one guy can, can, really, can really torpedo you if he shoots enough. So... Yep. That's that. Moving on to question number two. It's from Kobe Vlachek. I apologize if I mispronounce your name, but he says, Hi, Steve. Regarding you taking Luca with first round picks, is there a strategy behind it or is it just pure emotion? This is easily my favorite question we got. We had to get this one in near the top. This is, I mean, this alone just makes me happy. Steve, what's your response? Well, this is basically all I hear on Twitter is, you know, <laughs> what are you doing? Like, why? Like, are you trying to win or are you just out here to draft Luka? And the, the answer is actually kind of a combination of both. I mean, to get Luka Doncic in a draft this year, you basically have to have a top three pick. He's generally going two behind, behind uh, Jokic. And in a draft I had the other day, I got the number one pick. And I was like, there's only going to be a couple times this year I'm able to get my guy on my team. And at this point, you know, we're not playing for a million dollars. I don't have to win this league. I, 
it's not like my life depends on it. I'd rather have fun and have the guys that I, I like to have. Um, so I went ahead and took Luca in front of Jokic. Now, would I tell any of the viewers to do that? Or would I tell you guys to do that? No, I wouldn't tell you to do that. But do I think it's possible to win with Luca over Jokic? I do, because you never know what's going to happen with injuries. I mean, the whole league is going to deal with injuries at some point. Um, Luca may finally start hitting free throws this year, although his uh, Eurobasket run was not encouraging in that department. But, you know, I want to have Luca on my team because that's my guy. I've been with him for five years or whatever. And, uh, and you know, I, I'm doing this to have a good time and entertain myself more so than I am to try to destroy everyone in my path. Which Luca still may help you accomplish, by the way. So I, yeah. I think it's a reasonable thing. Like I, too much is made of it. Oh, but you're overlooking the turnovers, the free throw percentage. Listen, those are the two flaws in his game. He doesn't give you a ton of defensive stats, but he's a he's a stat stuffing stud. He's been uh, healthy. He is looking fit. As you said, he played in Eurobasket. He comes into, into training camp in probably the best condition maybe we've seen him in throughout his NBA career. So could be another leap coming this season. If And if you ignore turnovers, Luca was a borderline first round guy last year, period. If you are looking at a points league, he's already a top three guy with a bullet and his ADP on Fantrax and Yahoo is within the top five. So if you want Luca to Steve's point, he's a fun guy. Like there's nothing wrong with trying to entertain yourself and win uh, with one pick. And I think Luca can accomplish that. And if you want him, you need a top five or top six pick. So, and and also he's the favorite to win the MVP award this season over Nikola Jokic. So, yeah. I mean, I don't think we've seen the best that Luca has to offer yet. And you know, Dallas is predicted to win a lot of games. They've got new guys in the mix, and I, I just think it's going to be a fun Luca season as long as that right ankle uh, doesn't become bothersome. And, and I'll just add on. I mean, if you're playing in a nine category league, though, uh, or an eight category league, don't fool yourself. You're you're punting free throws if you drafted Luca. I mean, seven and a half attempts, seventy four yeah. percent is gonna is gonna bring you down enough. So just draft accordingly. Don't don't go into oh, let me just salvage this by drafting great free throw shooters only now and ignore the other stats. No, build on that. You just you just took a shaky free throw shooter. You just went all in. You you really might as well punt it honestly in a head to head league at that point. So in head to head, because going back to our first question and you, you introduced the term soft punt, I think Luke is a great opportunity in a roto league to operate a soft punt, try to mitigate that free throw a little bit right. so that maybe you, you pick up a three or a four in that category and dominate elsewhere. And, and whereas in a head to head league, I mean, I, I, guess, I guess you could try that strategy, but I, I just tend to think free throw is, is just an easy category, relatively easy category to punt. There's a bunch of great yes. options there. So. Moving to the next one. Uh, this is from uh, Ricardo Lawrence. I'm assuming Ricardo is his first name, but it's Lawrence underscore Ricardo. He says, regarding Trey Jones from San Antonio, will you reach for him in round eight or nine in a 14-team league? Very specific. I love it. Ryan, this is coming your way. I Yeah, I, I would reach for him in round eight or nine, especially in a 14-team. 14 yeah. team league I mean, where eight times four 112 is that where we yeah. are i mean yeah not even a reach yes. really and D dimes get scarce around this time he's a point guard who's not going to kill your percentages it's been a theme early in the pod uh you know joshua primo's competition for guard minutes you've got devin vassell he's going to have the ball in his hands quite a bit but there's a lot of touches to go around for the spurs who don't have those clear ball dominant high usage go-to guys like Keldon Johnson maybe is their primary threat with Facel, Joshua Primo, Jakob Pertl's going to be like a focal point at times. So Trey Jones, my point is, has to be pretty high on this list. Uh, I'm a little bit sketchier on him in Dynasty because I feel like he's destined to become a backup point guard in the NBA, uh -huh. but maybe I'm a little too low on him there. But in redraft, 14 team, eight or nine, uh, eight or nine rounds sounds great. Yeah, I got him in round nine of a 12-team league. Um, so maybe I reached a little bit there. Maybe I didn't. I know, uh, uh, who was it? Gordon Hayward and Chris Duarte went in that same round. I'd much rather have an up-and-coming guy like Trey Young than those those guys. Hey, so, yeah, Trey Young in the ninth is always a good value. <laughs> yeah, Trey, I guess Jones. Trey Young. Steve, oh no, we found another, oh, another no. glitch. Trey another Jones. Brain glitch. <laughs> 
Trey Jones. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm I'm a big fan of his upside and his opportunity this year. I feel like he could be a mini Tyrese Maxey from last year, maybe this year. You get get him late, and he kind of goes off and returns maybe fifth round value. Eleven games as a starter, thirteen and a half points, four and a half rebounds, seven and a half assists for Trey Jones. Did not hit many threes in that sample. I think just three in eleven games. But other than that, plenty to like from this guy, including yeah. the ADP. Next question is from Jag twenty three twenty three. By the end of the regular season this year, Jabari Smith Jr. will be a top blank fantasy player for next year in 2023-24. I'll jump in on this one first, guys, because I was thinking about this this morning. I'm going to say uh, slightly aggressively, I'm going to say top 60. And and that is to say I really like him. Um, I mean, let's remember the highest ranked rookie last year in terms of nine category leagues, if I'm not mistaken, was Scotty Barnes at 66. Evan Mobley was great. He was in the 80s, though. I mean, we loved those guys in fantasy, right? So this is that's to say, I really like Jabari Smith Jr. And I was checking, and his Yahoo ADP is 119, Steve. I mean, hmm. I don't know. I, even if I'm wrong, even if I'm too optimistic and he falls into the 80s, it doesn't feel like you're going to, I don't know. Maybe some leagues you have to reach for him, but I just, I really like the value here and I really like the player. Well, not to jump on your bandwagon, but I was thinking 65. Uh, that was the number I had in mind. And really, Scotty Barnes didn't play he didn't do all that much i don't think it would take that much for jabari smith to be a top 60 65 player um and and then next year he's he's probably just gonna explode yeah that's why i kind of went higher because this question explicitly references next year in 2023-24 so i i I didn't read the question i just answered what i wanted to answer (laughs) but well it it, it sets the table top you you literally read the question (laughs) i i did but i'm just saying i answered how i think he'll finish this year which yes i guess you could modify it slightly yeah, but it, it's all part of the same conversation. I, I'm with you guys. I think that early middle round range is probably where Jabari will finish this year. Uh, he shot 43% last year for Auburn, which doesn't look great on the surface. But you have to realize he attempted nearly six three-pointers per game, yeah. which was about half of his total shot attempts. So yeah. he was a shade under 80% at the line. He's a good shooter. Let's just let's just bury that. I know he wasn't in summer league, but he'll get there. Uh, He had 1.1 steals, a block in under 29 minutes per game last year. So I think he's got the well-rounded versatile tool set to be a fantasy godsend. Uh, You know, early middle round sounds good this year. I think by the time you're drafting for next year, he's going to be going in the third round. You won't be able to get him in the fourth. And also Ryan shot 42% on threes at the college level. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I'm sure we don't cut and paste that to the NBA, but this guy is a great shooter. He yep. is a great, he is, he has got a sweet jump shot. All right. Next up from Flyby NBA says, it's really hard for me to accurately assess the magic due to uncertainty. We could just stop there and just say we all agree, but we're going to keep going with the rest of the question. What rounds are you taking Wendell Carter Jr., Mo Bamba, Steve? What are your thoughts on this one? WCJ and Bamba. I think I've been in six to eight drafts so far, and I have no shares of them on my teams. And I'm not okay. sure I have any Orlando Magic players on any of my fantasy teams so far. And you know, that doesn't make me sad. Smart and man. Yeah, I I who knows what's going to happen there. Um I do like Paolo Bancaro, like he's favorite to win the rookie of the year. Mm-hmm. He should be fun, but then again, what if what if that guy Jonathan, what's his name? uh Jonathan... Isaac, Isaac, oh Isaac. Isaac yeah what if he comes back and plays this season we haven't seen him in three years like what if he goes off then that then that throws everybody else um into a tailspin I mean I don't know I'm just avoiding the magic altogether Ryan are you are you that extreme or are you going to draft some of these guys if they fall pretty Pretty extreme. I mean, I think about the Magic roster, there are some like deep cut guys that in deep leagues, maybe, you know, take a flyer on RJ Hampton, the final round or something. There's been talk of Jalen Suggs, you know, shooting better in preseason, but he's got a long way to go to help those percentages climb for fantasy purposes. But to the point of this question, Wendell Carter Jr. and Mo Bamba in the at the center position. They shared the court a lot last year. I don't think that's going to happen this year nearly Mm -hmm. as much. It might not happen at all. So suddenly you're looking at a pure timeshare at center. 
minutes are, are limited. Wendell Carter Jr. has never been a very good per minute fantasy option anyway. I know he's only 23 years old, but he's still a prime candidate for late season rest. He could be a shutdown candidate on a extremely young team that's just trying to lose games and, and tank. Yeah. Uh, Mo Bamba, his shot blocking at least gives him the edge per minute for sure. Mo Bamba yeah. only needs like 22 minutes a game to hit yeah. top 100 nine cap value. So he would be my target. I still am not going to reach for Bamba before round 10, 11. He tends to drop. Nobody's really invested in getting Bamba on their team. So uh, in redraft, I think as a late round flyer, uh, Bamba's fine. Yeah, so uh, Wendell Carter Jr.'s ADP is 78 on Yahoo as we Oof, record this. Too high. Uh, 80 he was 83rd in nine cat last year mo Bamba's adp is 102 and he finished way higher than that you know with some inconsistency but was actually a really solid uh, yep. overall per game fantasy player last year so yeah i think i'm with you ryan i mean bomba doesn't need a ton of minutes you know he's still there i don't know that that's that's the guy who if he's fallen well outside the top 100 i wouldn't mind taking especially if i'm in a league where i need blocks wendell carter jr is fine but He's not a huge ceiling guy, I don't think. What, 15 and 10 last year was like 0.7 blocks? He's solid, but he's more serviceable. And I still think you, at that opportunity, around 80, you, you have a chance to take a swing. So he's not a big swing player for me. So I'm I'm probably not going to end up with him in a lot of leagues. Yeah. Uh, we actually have back-to-back -back, uh, fly-by NBA questions. So we will fly by this next question quickly. Does Clint Capella have a chance to get back to top 50 value? I took him in the, well, he took him in a league in the seventh. Um. <laughs> too high question mark uh, no i'm just gonna answer that i'm gonna say no um a down year last year he was 65th overall in nine category leagues he had a, an off-season procedure on his achilles um before the season he had a slow start the previous three seasons this guy was a top 25 guy in nine category leagues and even if he doesn't get there even if we think that's too ambitious i mean his current yahoo adp of 74 is just a steal in my mind steve well, it's too bad that Jared's not here to speak on this because he sure. loves him some Clint Capella. But, you know, the the league that uh, the nine cat league that I'm in, 12 teams, he went right in the middle of the seventh round. I think that's right on target where he's going to be going this this season uh, based on the, the little downturn last year and then. Of course, uh, Anika Kangwu is there. Mm -hmm. I don't think a Kangwu is going to ruin Clint Capella this year. I don't think it's possible for that to happen. But he he is going to get plenty of minutes. Um, Capella's another year older. But, yeah, I, I'm good with Capella, um, especially if you can get him in the sixth or seventh round this year instead of the fourth round last year. It just seems like a value pick. Yeah, I don't have much to add to that. Round seven feels right for Capella. It feels like a decent value, as you pointed out, Matt. That's where he was last year. Uh, and that was despite shooting 47.3% from the free throw line. Yeah. He still was a whatever top 70 value in nine cat. So uh, yeah, there was the downturn. So I feel like you're getting a bit of a discount. Last year, you probably had to spend a, a pick around 50 to get Capella on your team. Uh, Okongwu's impact worries me maybe a little bit more than you were alluding to, Steve. But, you know, we heard that Nate McMillan wants to get the ball into Okongwu's hands. He's a more versatile kind of player. But Capella will get his, as long as he can stay on the court and remain durable, seventh round pick is fine. Uh, I, I'm not chasing him, I will say, because there's usually a guy like Nick Claxton who I could get a couple rounds after Capella who feels like his doppelganger, awful free throw shooter, will get you boards, block some shots you know, really help your field goal percentage in the process, but he's younger and has more upside. So that's, that's the reason I'm not really chasing Capella in the middle rounds. I do think, I do think Claxton, I mean, a down year for Capella was 11 points, 12 rebounds, 1.3 blocks. You'd be through the roof excited. If you got that from Claxton this year, the boards be for beyond, sure. beyond thrilled. Yeah. So, I yeah. mean, anyways, Capella, it's interesting. Claxton went, uh, three picks before Capella in that draft in the seventh round. So, and that's, that's like industry wow. insiders. Okay. It's well, very, maybe there is no discount. Well, there's, Claxton. <laughs> you know, some people are super excited about Claxton and some people are not. Um, I think it just depends on who you talk to. So my dog's uh, excited, it. as you may have heard about Claxton. <laughs> yeah. He got Ozzie. riled up. Anyhow, anyhow. Yeah. So we'll move to the next one. We don't want to linger on any of these for too long. We got a lot to get through next up. 
Uh, Talk Shot Pod asks, in a head-to-head nine-category 12-team league, do you prefer Cade Cunningham or Kawhi Leonard at the end of the second round? And my response to this, Ryan, is <clears throat> is neither an option. Can we can we say neither, or do we have to, oh. do we have to pick one? I, I, I think based on the strictures of this question, we have to pick one, unfortunately. Okay, who are you uh, picking? I'm going to go with Kawhi just because I'll take the upside over the risk. Uh, I love Cade. I think he's going to take a big leap this season. Mm -hmm. But that said, he shot 41.6% on high volume last year. He committed 3.7 turnovers Mm -hmm. with 5.5 dimes. Those are tough numbers in nine cat. Now he's going to be sharing the ball more with Jaden Ivey. Maybe that helps him. I don't know. Point being, I like Cade. But Kawhi, the only risk is can he stay on the court? We get that that's a given uh we can assume eight to ten games of rest throughout the season but we're talking about a player who's been top 10 for about a decade straight i looked into this and on ba- per basketball monster in 2021 Kawhi played 52 games and he was still number nine on a cumulative basis the year mm-hmm. before that he played 57 games and was number six overall on a cumulative basis he was even wow. higher per game so he, this guy can miss a third of the season and still hit first round fantasy value <laughs> he's just that good on a per game basis so I will take me some Kawhi. Yeah, in in that draft, I keep mentioning Kawhi went middle of the second round. Cade was the last pick in the third round. And I feel like that is probably how it's going to go in most drafts this year. I personally am all about young guys. I'd rather have Cade Cunningham. I'm probably not messing with Kawhi Leonard and his load management and his injury history and hmm. and the Clippers to me look like possibly the deepest team in the, in the league. Like they're so deep, they're really deep. Um, that I think they're going to be able to. Ty Lue's going to be able to afford to rest Kawhi as as much as he wants to. Um, hopefully, he doesn't need to. Like I I root for Kawhi. I want Kawhi to play, but um, I just I'm going to be drafting young guys and guys I think are going to play a lot of games. And yes, Cade's turnovers are a concern. Cade's youth is a concern. The Pistons are a little bit of a concern, but I just feel like Cade has got an arrow pointing straight upwards, and he, he can really build this season on what he did last season. Yeah, I we really need like, that tiebreaker yeah. vote, Matt. Yeah, I really like Cade. You know, as a player, I'm excited about him. But man, going from eighth round player, I think he was in the 90s on in nine category leagues to second round. That's a big leap to make in one season. It's not to say it can't be done, but that's asking a lot. So I, if I take that guy in the second round, I'm not doing it. So I'll, I'll take Kawhi. Um, and, and Ryan, you laid out a pretty compelling argument there. I'm not planning to take Kawhi in, in many leagues as of now. But after hearing what you said, Ryan, I, I, I get it, especially if I've got a pretty safe, durable mm-hmm. guy in the first round, then maybe I can take a swing on Kawhi in the second round and tell myself, hey, I, when these guys are healthy, I've got two first round guys. And my, my thing is, I'm not taking either one of them in the second round. I would I would look at Cade in the third and into the fourth. That's, that's okay. what I was saying. Ricardo is back. He says, will you reach for Evan Mobley in the third round of a redraft league, debating it myself as he rarely falls to the fourth round? Whose turn is it on this one? I can't even remember. Who wants it? Uh, I, can... I love Evan Mobley. This one to two week injury uh-huh. uh, stinks. Hopefully that doesn't linger into the start of the regular season, but it certainly could. He went in the late third round of that industry draft. I keep talking about right before Cade Cunningham, ironically. Um, That seems like a good spot to get Mobley because Mobley is, he's another guy. Like there's so much hype about him. People are so fired up about him. People are excited to get him on their team. He could, he's another guy that can, you know, really, blow up this year and, and have an incredible season. Um, I I like it. I like third round for Mobley. Yeah, that seems perfectly reasonable to me. Uh, his ADP in Yahoo is 40.3 and fan yeah. tracks. It's 43, but I feel like that's weighted by pre-ranks and is, is steadily getting lower and lower uh, or higher and higher, I guess. Um, you know, he's gone in the third and most competitive drafts is my point, And I'm fine with it. He stuffs the box score. He's going to be a walking double, double probably this season. He gets you steals. He gets you blocks. He'll get a couple sneaky dimes. Mm-hmm. Um, if not he can squeaky add three, dimes. He will get sneaky. Not dimes, squeaky, though. but sneaky. <laughs> uh, he'll add, you know, if he could add three point range, that would just be the icing on the cake. He does need to shoot better from the free throw line, but 
whatever. We've seen one season out of the guy. He's he's got to work ethic. Yeah. He's going to improve a lot of these areas we're discussing. So I think third round makes all the sense in the world. A stat I've cited on this podcast before via basketball reference: uh, players averaging better than fifteen points, eight rebounds, two assists, one and a half blocks. Okay, fifteen and eight, two assists, one and a half blocks at age twenty or younger. The list is Carl Anthony like, Towns, Chris Webber, Kevin Garnett, Evan Mobley. End of the list. Oh, so. Wow. I mean, if you're going to reach for a guy, if you're going to say, well, can this guy get from the 80s? We're just talking about Kate Cunningham having to jump from the, you know, eighth round to the second round. Can Mobley jump from the seventh round to the second round? I'd be more inclined to bet on Mobley. And especially because, you know, at the very least, you're getting elite blocks. And, Mm -hmm. you know, what what are you getting with Kate Cunningham? Well, you could get just a through the roof season, but... With Mobley, we know we're getting the elite blocks, and there's a chance at some other categories to make a jump too. So that's the guy I want to bet on. But as yet, as as Steve said, out one to two weeks due to a sprained ankle, according to Shams Charania. So that's just something to monitor. Uh, but doesn't sound too bad at the moment. Next question from the kid villain in a 16 team head to head league. Steve, you know this is coming your way. Who's your ideal pairing for Luka Doncic, Steve? Okay, there we go. You skipped Steve one, with though. his first ticker, his first ticker, ticker gaff. Nope. But uh, <laughs> in nope. a head to head, in a 16 team head to head league, who is your ideal pairing for Luka Doncic in the second round? Steve, we know this oh, is something you've thought about. That was my fault. That was yeah. totally my fault. We know uh, this is something you've thought about a lot. I do think about this uh, every night when I'm laying in bed <laughs> trying to fall asleep. Who am I going to pair Luka with when I finally get Luka? Your wife on one loves of my this team? conversation. <laughs> Yeah, I can't, I'm, I'm surprised she hasn't uh, tape recorded me or <laughs> recorded me uh, talking about Luca in my sleep this year. But I like to like to pair Luca with another poor free throw shooting, super fun young guard, and that is Ja Morant. Yeah, um, seems like Ja is there. You know, at that time of the draft, when it comes back around, um, the free throw percentage turns people off. Um, the fact that Ja was such a bad fantasy player two years ago and such an incredible fantasy player last year, or a much better fantasy player last yeah. year, um, all the momentum is heading in his direction. He, he had a big 360 dunk on Monday night in his preseason opener. Mm-hmm. He was all over the place, flying through the air. He's he's super fun. I mean, if you have Luca and Ja on your team yeah. and you have the NBA League pass, uh, you're going to be entertained for an entire 82-game uh, <laughs> yeah. season. And as we know, Steve, you're here for the fun. So that is truly your ideal squad. Yeah. Ryan, any I any other it. names you want to throw into the equation, Ryan? Um, I, I like the, the jaw idea. I like pairing. And again, this is head-to-head, so you can punt percentage. I, you know, a player like De'Aaron Fox would be a great pickup. Uh, if you could pair... You know, in the third round, probably Fox falls a little bit, but he's he would be a great pairing in the backcourt with Doncic. Uh, someone like Rudy Gobert would be great yeah, if you're just going to I was going to say percentage. Rudy Gobert. Suddenly you got, you know, all your dimes taken care of, your threes, your, and now you got your big. I love that yeah. bread and butter. If you're in a roto league, I think going for someone like Darius Garland makes sense. High turnovers, so maybe just turnovers are going to be an issue, but uh, excellent free throw percentage. You can try to mitigate it. Matt, I know that's not your favorite approach. Well, the the names that I wrote down were Ja, Gobert, and I also wrote down Bam Adebayo and Demontis Sabonis. There's a couple uh, other um, iffy free throw shooters who could pair well with Luca. Bam is undervalued too. I love Bam this year. Keith Don would like to know. I'm in a nine category league, shallow with ten teams. I'm at the turn with the tenth pick. Who am I? Who am I targeting for the tenth and eleventh? I know how to speak hmm. for the tenth and eleventh picks. Ryan, who is he targeting? Who is Keith Don targeting? I think he's going to go with Carl Anthony Towns and okay. then whoever's available out of LaMelo Ball, Tyrese yep. Halliburton, or Damian Lillard. Get your elite big, get your elite point guard, yeah. and I think you've got draft my, another round. I think you've got my notes in front of you, Ryan. Did you uh, <laughs> hack into my machine again? Oh, you're, you're sharing your screen with the world, man. <laughs> well, Trey, Trey Young is also going to be in that vicinity, right? Yeah, I wrote down Lamelo, Lillard, Halliburton, Car Anthony Towns. Don't think Trey will fall, but Trey could. He <laughs> he certainly could fall to tenth in some leagues. Yeah, he went twelfth in that league. Yeah. Yep. Trey, Lamello, Trey dropped. I think the Dejunte factor is a little bit. You know, gives I don't people know. a little bit of pause. I saw Trey go sixth in a league recently. Granted, I took him there, but um, <laughs> you know, it does. It does. Wow. I think I saw him go around there in another league where I did not take him though. So. 
Well, this is crazy because in that that league, Trey went with the last pick of round one, and Carl Anthony Towns went with the first pick of round two. I don't know how Cat fell into round two, but it happened. I don't know if it's because it's, it's probably be- illness. Is it because he's playing power forward next to Gobert? Some combination. It's yeah. probably because some guy named Dana Barros took uh, Tyrese Halliburton at number five. Dana Barros is in your uh, fantasy league. Well, <laughs> he's also an AKA Ryan Canals. Oh, yeah, that's okay. Great. <laughs> so, by the way, just just before we move on, because we we do need to keep moving. I mean, I love the tenth spot in a yeah in a this year's twelve team league. I love it. I mean, you you're gonna tell me I could get Lamelo and Carl Anthony Towns or. Tyrese Halliburton in Towns or any any you know Lillard in Towns, I mm-hmm. love that start, man. What are, you're you're feeling great right there. Even if it's Lillard and AD, it's like all right, injury risk. Uh, you yeah. know, wouldn't be my favorite pairing, but hey, I've got two guys who could finish top ten right there. It's, yeah, yeah. Lillard and Trey. I'll take some. I'll, I'll get some bigs later. I mean, man, a lot of a lot, a lot of fun, a lot of fun options there. Well, and it's interesting because last year I I remember picking tenth was just it was not fun. Like Jason Tatum, yeah. it was Jason Tatum or bust, and. Yeah. This year, I feel like picking 10th, there's so many more options. It's it's yeah, pretty fun place. All right, we have more questions to come. First, we're going to take a quick break. As you know, the fantasy basketball season is almost here, and you can get a jump start on your draft with the Roto World Fantasy Draft Guide. Get player profiles, expert rankings, mock drafts, and more. Use code HOOPS5 at checkout and get yours for just $5. That's code HOOPS5 at checkout to get yours for just $5. Go to NBCSportsEdge.com slash edge plus today all right next up we're gonna go to andy mays what's the best category to punt in head-to-head and why aren't leagues doing away with free throw percentage and replacing with free throws made ryan i feel a little bit like we covered this to some extent any thoughts from you uh, beyond free throws and any thoughts on the free throws made versus free throw percentage question that's an interesting one i mean personally i i like rewarding efficiency so I, yeah. I think it adds nuance to the game. It's part of the reason I prefer nine cat to eight cat, not only because it reduces the amount of ties you have at the end of weekly matchups, but um, yeah, it, it rewards efficiency. And I think that that's something, you know, two players with high usage, Chris Paul can have two turnovers a game and Trey Young has four, whatever, not to bash your Hawks guy. Sorry, fellas. But the point is why not reward the increased efficiency? So um you know, you can make a, an argument for free throws made, but then go join a points league if that's what you want. Um, in terms of which category is the best to punt, I'll just throw out really quickly that I think punting field goal percentage is underrated. Free throw mm-hmm. percentage is obvious. We talk about it a lot, but you're usually going to be in a league with at least one other manager who's also trying to punt free throw percentage. So you're right. targeting a lot of the same players as the draft progresses. Uh, field goal percentage opens up a whole box of value that is underutilized. Well, and I think turnovers is is an easy one to, to punt too because all the best players in the league turn the ball over. And yeah. and I prefer eight category leagues where turnovers are not part of it because I we're we're punishing people for for having the the best players in the league on their team. I've never really yeah. been behind that. I'm also back from the Shaq days. I also prefer free throws made over free throw percentage because I just don't like. The fact that one guy like Clint Capella or Nick Claxton can just bury you, you're the rest of your entire team in free throws. Where is if you have a, if you have a really good player on your team, he's not going to carry your entire team in one category. So I don't think it's right that one player should be able to bury your team in one category. Also, but it is what it is. Yeah, my feeling about that eight category league thing is I can't stand the sight of a four to four tie in a <laughs> in a fantasy league. It really bothers me. But but other than that, point taken. Next question, uh, P-A-L-T-I-Q. I just said the letters of that one. In redraft nine category leagues, what pick is ideal for Carl Anthony Towns this season? Well, we just talked about that a little bit, Ryan. I mean, his ADP on Yahoo is 10. We were just talking about taking him 10th or 11th. That seems like a great spot. I'm not opposed to taking him before that. Uh, I guess really quickly, because we don't want to spend too long on Towns, yeah. but do you worry about the Gobert thing at all? Not really. I think the his rebounds will probably come down. Towns, that is. Um, that, that's about the only hit I foresee. Mm-hmm. It's not like Cat was a strong rim protector anyway, and suddenly he's going to yeah. be displaced by a Gobert or something. So I, I think it's fine. Um, they're going to be on the court a lot together. They're also, you know, Chris Finch wants to stagger their minutes as much as possible to have one of them on the court at all times. So Cat's going to get plenty of non-Gobert minutes as well. 
Uh, I don't think there's much else to say. The, the bloom is off the rose a little bit for Cat, but I he's still in his prime. He's been durable throughout his career until the past couple of years due mostly to fluky kind of things. So uh, I love him at the turn. Well, he was recently in the hospital, so his, his season's getting off to a little bit of a shaky start. He's, he sounds like he's going to be good to go for the start of the season. One thing I like about him playing with Gobert is he loves to stand out at the three-point line. He's kind of like me. He likes to stand out at the three-point line and <laughs> and throw it up. He doesn't love to play defense. He doesn't love – he's not just – he's not an inside power guy, which is what Gobert's going to end up doing there. So maybe – Cat lingers out outside a little bit, doesn't get banged up as much, and stays a little bit healthier this year. Cat Cat's called himself the best shooting big in NBA history, so here's his chance to prove it. Yeah, and Steve, that's why I always think of you and and Carl Anthony Towns in the same breath. Yeah, I mean we're very <laughs> we have a very similar game. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, similar, Seth similar Mark. skill set. <laughs> Seth Mark is our next uh, caller. He says your thoughts on Jaron Jackson Jr. He was available as the 112th pick. In my 2020 team league, that's a, that's a phrase you don't read every day. So I took him. Did I make a mistake? I mean, I'll jump in here, guys. I'll say I don't mind it. I mean, we're talking about a guy who had a four to six month timetable from late June. So let's be pessimistic. Six months from June is end of December, early January. I mean, in a 20 team league, you want to mitigate risk a little bit. In a regular, you know, 10, 12 team league, I feel like that's a very worthwhile flyer to take outside of the top 100, even if they're going to be extra cautious with him. Ryan, you look like you're um, you have some thoughts here. I'd also say I would try to get Brandon Clark if you can, but this draft already mm. happened. So I'm just uh, I'm a bit of a skeptic when it comes to Jaron Jackson Jr. staying on the court. Mm -hmm. uh, Sorry, I Jones. also don't I don't like the total opacity of the Grizzlies injury updates. They, mm -hmm. They've been very cagey over the years. They're going to be extremely cautious with Jaron Jackson Jr. So I take that initial timetable and any optimistic updates since then with a big grain of salt. Uh, of course, if he can stay on the court, that the per game potential makes him an absolute steal outside the top 100, clearly. Yeah. Uh, I'm just so skeptical of his health that I'm usually willing to let somebody else take that gamble. But he's also not falling to 112th in most leagues. So right. uh, I, I can see both sides of this argument. And by somebody else, Ryan, you mean Jonas. Yes, clearly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, he went in the seventh round uh, in our that draft I keep talking about. So that, that's kind of early for a guy that could miss a huge chunk of the season. I don't know. I, 112 sounds fair to me. Like, I, I don't have a problem with that. I, I would take him, again, with you guys right outside the top, top 100. Something we saw uh, on Monday night, by the way, that's worth noting here, is Salty Aldamas starting in place of Jaron Jackson Jr., isn't Brandon Santa, Clark. Isn't it Santi Aldama? Oh. Did I He's call him Steve, Steve, Steve I Oh, wow. And a, front of me. and a new nickname is born. And a new Salty, salty Dog Aldamas. Santi, Al Santi Aldama. Santi Aldamas. Anyway, he started in that. You know who I'm talking about. I, you, know, you know the thing. Uh, yeah, salty. We got you. Yeah, uh, he started in front of J. He started for JJJ. He had a great game. There's a lot of reporters in Memphis that think he's going to start. Uh, for the whole time that uh, JJJ is out, and he looked oh. really good in the preseason opener. So that okay. is a guy I think you should put on your radar. If you do end up with JJJ, you may want to sneak in at the end of your draft and get Santi Aldama. So like let's that. say let's say hypothetically you're in a 20 team league. You took Jaron Jackson Jr. You may want to run run hit that waiver wire and make sure Aldama is still there. Still not there. Not still there. Okay. GM 1971. I'm assuming this is someone who was born in 1971 and has therefore been playing fantasy basketball for a very long time. Asks, will Denver trust Bones Highland enough to let him contribute nightly? Guys, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to quickly say I, I'm leaning toward no. Uh, Jamal Murray's back. Um, looking pretty good. He played on whatever day this is, the day before this day. Uh, we played earlier this week, I should say. And I mean, just looking at the roster, where do the minutes come from? You've got Murray at the one. You've got Caldwell Pope at the two. He's going to be on the floor. He's got a new contract. He's going to be on the floor because of his defense. Michael Porter Jr. is healthy. Uh, you've got Aaron Gordon at the four, Jokic at the five. You have Jack of all trades, Bruce Brown in the mix here. I'm worried about Bones, Ryan, on a game-to-game -game basis. Being Yeah, sure, maybe he's a guy who can go off in DFS here and there, but I'm just worried about some wild fluctuation. 
I maybe a little fluctuation, but I I'm more optimistic than you. I think okay. he, you know, you, you ran through the starters, but I think Bones could be the sixth man. He's, you know, Bruce Brown is versatile. He can slot into all different positions, but Bones is going to get his minutes and he's going to get usage with that second unit. Uh, he's going outside pick 130 in Yahoo leagues, but I prefer okay. him to a lot of other guys who are going in that range. And I, I look as a sample, I like to look at last March in 15 games, he averaged 14 points on 51% shooting, 47 from deep, 80 from the line, three boards, 4.3 dimes, 0.9 steals. And yes, you know, Jamal Murray wasn't there and Michael Porter Jr. was hurt, but Highland hit those numbers in 21.9 minutes per game. So, he does not need a ton of playing time. He's efficient for a high, you know, potentially high volume, high usage guy in limited minutes off the bench. So I like the way he projects as a guy you can get outside the top 120. Well, and that's what I was going to say. It doesn't really matter if he breaks out this year because where you're drafting him, yeah. he's going to hit that value probably. Uh, so there's not a lot of risk. There is upside. I'm kind of with with you, Matt. I, I don't know. You didn't even mention Ish Smith, I don't think. But Ish Smith is a lot, lot of backup point guard there. Um, but like like Ryan said, Bones only needs 20, 22 minutes to, to produce. And I don't know why he couldn't get that uh, on this team. So uh, he just seems like a safe pick wherever you choose to take him. You know, outside of the, you know, if he's going 120, I, you can't go wrong. Uh all right, guys, we, we only have about, I don't know, nine-ish minutes before we got to go. So let's try to speed through as many of these as we can. Speed round here. Jag 23-23S, when do you think Miles Turner will be traded this season, if at all? Ryan, your quick response there. And does it matter for fantasy? How much does it matter? I It seems like he's going to be traded soon. Uh, he's perpetually on the trade block. There's a recent report by Shams Trania that the Lakers are still pondering a potential trade that would send Miles Turner and Buddy Heald to LA for Russell Westbrook and two unprotected first round picks. We don't know if that's happening. I will say it does matter for fantasy because to me, any trade that gets Miles Turner out of Indiana is a big win for fantasy because he is a shutdown risk on a bad team. Well, a rebuilding team, I should say that's going nowhere fast. He's, he's going to be a glaring shutdown risk if he's still uh, with the Pacers. I'm going to say he gets moved at the deadline. Okay. Next up, Seth Mark asks, do you trust Jamal and MPJ this year? He says he just picked Jamal as his fifth, I believe, fifth rounder is what he's saying in a 20-team league. I've heard about this 20-team league. Uh, Steve, do you trust Jamal Murray and MPJ this year? Uh, you know, I, I, I got MPJ, I think, in round 10. Wow. Something like that in that, that draft. And, you know, people are like, dude, what are you doing? Do you really trust? Trust him uh, that he's going to be okay. Oh, actually, it was round six. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> I've gotten sense. him later than that. But, you know, yeah. I round six for Michael Ward Jr., round seven for Michael Ward Jr., I'm, uh -huh. I'm good with that. And I feel like the reports on Jamal Murray are really good. He looked good on Monday in his preseason debut. Uh, I think Denver's going to uh, time management those guys, load management those guys a little bit. So, uh, but overall, as late as they're going, yes, I'm in. That was going to be my my key is I don't trust either one of them, but I feel like Michael Porter Jr. is falling so far. I just got him yeah. in round seven, pick 11 in a 12-team league. So that's yeah. pick number 83. And I was like, great. You know, he's a potential top 20 guy if he's hitting. So right. I, I loved that pick. Jamal Murray, on the other hand, I feel like he's, you know, the question said he picked him as a fifth rounder. It's a 20 team league, so that's a little better, but I just don't trust him. I'd much rather spend up for a guy, maybe a round earlier, go for Tyrese Maxey, just someone without all the injury baggage. I feel like there are enough quality options in that early middle round range where Murray's being drafted that I, I'll pass. Yeah, I also got MPJ in the seventh round of a league, and I just think you're getting to the point where some of the upside starts to dry up and you might as well take a swing there, honestly, rather than right. take a, a super boring guy who we've seen. And as for Steve, I know you want to jump back in, but as for Murray, I mean, the, the positive thing is at least we know he's not rushing back, right? He took, he took a lot of time recovering from this one. So I don't know. He looked good uh, in the preseason so far and hopefully he's ready to go. Go ahead. Steve. Well, fifth, fifth round in a 20 team league is more like 10th round. So I, yeah, I'm, I'm good with it. I'm good. With yeah. It. All right. Uh, Meast commission. Ax 
asks asks it's october <laughs> which means it's nba fantasy draft season i'm trying to explain to my second league to remove the last week of the season you got that he's in his second league he wants to remove the last week should we be only removing one week or two um i'm just gonna say you won't regret moving too. things get <laughs> for moving too. things get real weird there at the end you're not gonna regret mo- removing one more um, is is I mean, three an option? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Next up, Brian Ogston one says, I'm in a keeper's league with one keeper per year. We lose the pick of the round. Your lone keeper was initially drafted. I can only keep one of these players. Halliburton, drafted third round, or Scotty Barnes, drafted seventh round. Ryan, who should he keep? Oh, that's a tough one. I, these are both excellent possibilities. I'm going to go with Halliburton just because yeah. I think he can be a single-handed league winning type value. Yeah. The, the dimes are outrageous. He hits threes. He's efficient, blah, blah, blah. Barnes has more leaps in him, too. He's tw- 21 years old still, I think, right. uh, reigning rookie of the year. You, you can't go wrong, but I'm going to take Halliburton in round three by a hair. I think I'm going to go Scotty Barnes just because oh. of the round differential, seventh mm-hmm. round, and then you still have your third round pick, and maybe you get Tyrese Halliburton with, with your first round pick. I, I, I like... Um, yeah, I, I mean, look, you're talking about a seventh round guy. Sorry, my brain just totally shut down for a second there. You're talking about a seventh round guy who I, in my mind, could easily jump to, let's say, the third round per game this season. But you're also, then you're talking about a third round guy who we think can be a first rounder. So give me that that first round guy in the third round. That just uh, that just yeah. is pretty appealing. I have an alert. We only have one question left and we have just enough time for one question, Matt. Oh, really? We only have one more loaded in there? Yeah. Okay, load it load up. Okay, uh, Anthony Davis. This is from Kobe Vlachek again. In a head-to-head nine-category league, will you consider him at pick number eight, Steve? Uh, yes, I will consider him with pick number eight. Uh, you know, the Lakers are, they're all in on Anthony Davis. Everybody is saying we need Anthony Davis healthy. We need him on the court. If we're going to do what we need to do, he feels a lot of pressure. He wants to play in all 82 this year, which he's already been on the injury report ahead of their first preseason game with a sore back. So I don't trust Anthony Davis at all. I think he's going to miss games, but I mean, if he plays in 68 games, You've got a winner there. It's just, it's a long shot, man. I, I, I'm i looking at him. I just probably am not taking him. It's a big if he plays in that many games and all the preseason hype and he feels great. Like, I don't put much stock in that at this point. I look at the the games played for this guy over his career. He's a huge injury risk. And when I look at the top eight, you got the top three, Jokic, Giannis, Embiid. You throw Doncic in there. Curry, Tatum, Harden, Cat, LaMelo, Halliburton, KD. We're up to 11 players. Throw in Trey Young, Damian Lillard, blah, blah, blah. You're getting outside the first round, and I'm not mentioning Anthony Davis yet. Uh, yeah. I, I think he's right around that turn, but inside the top eight, at, at number eight, even number nine, I don't think I'm going there. Yeah, I just saw him go 18th in a league that I'm in. That's not necessarily where, where I'll go in a lot of leagues, but I think you yeah. are you're kind of taking on the risk um, to get the reward, you know? And and so I kind of, I, if you're an aggressive manager who's willing to take some risk, I love it as a second rounder, but I mean, look, we're talking about a guy who's averaged 49 games played the last four years. So it, it, could he yeah. be a top three fantasy guy on a per game basis? Absolutely. He could. And could he play 60 something games and be a home run pick? Yes. But do you want to take him at eight to take? And that gamble? if you're picking eighth, we just went over a scenario where you can get him in the second round. So right. I think I would yeah. go with with something a little more solid in the first round and hope he's yep. there when it comes back around. AD's uh, ADP, by the way, just to put a bullet in this, is uh, 16.3 in Yahoo, 16.7 in Fantrax. So you do not need to spend a top eight right. pick to get him to your point, Steve. Right. Very quickly. I, I do have one. We don't have it loaded into the ticker, but I'm just going to – actually, we can do mm, – one to two here real quick before we go. Music <laughs> Infamous asks, uh, how good will Jalen Smith and Tyrese Halliburton be? We've covered Halliburton. I want to talk about Jalen Smith because I think he's going to be an intriguing uh, pick in a lot of leagues. I'm just going to say this. 22 games for Indiana in just 25 minutes a game. 13 and a half points, seven and a half boards, a block, 1.4 threes, has a new contract. Rick Carlisle already has said this guy's a starting power forward. The EDP in Yahoo is 120. I mean, he may not go that late, but 
He's not going too high in drafts. Ryan, I just love this guy, and I think uh, he has a chance to to be a great value pick this year. Who was this referring to? Sorry. Jalen Smith. <laughs> Oh, yes. Yes. Jalen Smith. Absolutely. A value pick. He's right. Locked in as starting power forward. He gets you blocks, solid percentages from the power forward center eligible spots. Uh, he's another guy who's going to benefit if and when Miles Turner is shipped out. Jalen Smith benefits. Isaiah Jackson absolutely grab that dude as a late round flyer. Uh, love both of them. I love Jalen Smith. I got him in the seventh round of that draft and couldn't be happier about it. Quickly, we're going to be real fast on this one. Michael, 2203-0494 asks, are you worried about Bam this year? His stats were kind of bad in the playoffs. I looked up those stats. He's around 15 points, eight boards, 2.7 dimes, a steal, 0.7 blocks. <laughs> I, I'll just say I'm not super worried about him, but I do think you could argue maybe he gets a little overdrafted in fantasy. He was 39th in nine category leagues last year. His Yahoo ADP is 22. So, I don't, I don't know what we're expecting necessarily. I feel like he goes maybe around early and there's some other guys I'd rather have, but uh, maybe you could talk me into him quickly in about 20 seconds, Ryan and Steve. I'm, I'm super into Bam. I, I think okay. he's going to be awesome. I think he's undervalued going into this year. Uh, the Heat didn't add anybody. They're, they're just relying on internal development pretty much. Yeah. They, their front court is very thin and they've said repeatedly throughout the preseason and training camp that they're going to go as far as Bam takes them. Jimmy Butler called them the engine of the team. He's going to have probably career high usage. I'm looking for a big year from Bam. I feel like the center tiers drop off very, very quickly once you get past Bam, pretty much. Uh, and I think that's why he's drafted so high because he is an elite fantasy center. Um, he may not be as good and elite as the guys that go in front of him, but he's he's pretty he's pretty good. I, I'm good with Bam. All right. That is going to do it for us on this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to our show on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, wherever you listen. Take a minute to rate and review us as well. And if you're watching this on the YouTube channel, our expert mock draft is coming up next. I want to say thanks to everyone for listening and watching. Ryan, Steve, thank you guys. I'll see you in the draft room. Thanks, man. See you guys. <laughs>